hello, and welcome to another tutorial again. This is for uh, Uberloo 2 on our Learn Dota 2. In this game, he will be Froggy. He's playing Anti Mage. I do have a lot of Anti Mage videos. He is my favorite. This will be a higher school game than most of the other videos. He is uh, closing in on 4K MMR. Uh, specifically, the question being asked is what more could you have done in the first 10 minutes um, before they high ground you at 20? Now, well, it is a very short game. It is only about 24 minutes long, um, which is a really tough way to have to play anti-mage. Um, now, when teams have the capacity to high ground you really early and your team falls like unbelievably far behind, it does make the games very, very hard and you are playing on a razor's edge. So it does require like very, very precise play, very precise movements, and like one bad decision is what's going to lose you the game. So they end up having a beast master, which makes their whole team tack faster, and so they're able to like, if they win one fight at your racks, you'll probably lose. Um, this game looks like your viper gets right in the middle. Uh, I think your Ursa must have been jungling. Oh no, no, the viper must have been offline. Well, whatever. We'll see in a moment. But um, but what we'll try and look at is like the laning mechanics, like what you could have done a little better, and um. Specifically, what you could have done better in laning phase, what movements, what things could have drawn out, and or sorry, drawn out and made the game last a little longer, stuff like that. Um, when I'm looking at this game now, I might point to little things that, in the grand scheme of things, might not have changed the outcome of this game. It's very possible. I mean, it's a 24-minute game. You're able to high ground. You, you died three times, depending on when those kills happened. It may or may not have mattered. Um, but like every little thing adds up, particularly when you're playing anti mage. So like everything collect everything individually might not make a big deal, or might might not make a difference. But when you add all those little things up, hopefully it will end up making a difference, and hopefully it, it could lead to like the difference that made that game winnable. If that makes sense. Um, and there are some games that even if you play the best game of your life on anti mage, you're not gonna win. It's because when you have a team that's high grounding with a Leshrac with full mana, and you don't have a Manta yet, you have no way to bring that Leshrac's mana down before an Edict takes your tower. Like, that was the bane of my existence in 684, when my team fucks up, feeds a Leshrac who's like 15-0 with like 22 Bloodstone charges or something like that, and they start knocking on my ta- or knocking on my, um, knocking on my tier 3s with like an Aegis on this Leshrac, and he's got max mana, and I have no way to get rid of his mana, no way to get a huge mana void. Those are the games that you can't win, just because I can't outplay that. I can't outplay this Leshrac having full mana and having no incentive and no reason to use it all. You can't TP into that fight and get a huge mana void at the end because, or in the middle of the end of the fight, because he's never gonna have the, he's never gonna lose enough mana for that to be an issue. It's like a storm who's gonna like jump across the world. <sighs> Starting build is fine. If you think you're in an aggressive lane, you probably want to get rid of these for more tangos, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. Probably want to start denying these once they hit half. Okay. So if you look at his items, he does have a stout shield, so your trading is not going to be too great against him. He's a higher armor hero. AM is a really low armor hero initially. Uh, for an Agi hero, it's very low. Oh man, first blood just splattered! And the all-knowing one, bear witness! <laughs> the Shadow Demon should be harassing this guy more. Like, the pulling is good, I guess, but he could harass him more, like, level 1. Because if he bubbles him, like, you can get a huge harass on him. If you know the Shadow Demon, this could very well be a solo queue game, and you should try and communicate that. Even if it's a pub, you can communicate it sometimes. It's good. Last hitting. That I think was unfortunate, but shit happens. Can't win them all. That was also an unfortunate one. There's like advanced CSC mechanics where you can like click and see the HP on a creep when it has like kind of low HP. Oh, that's really annoying too. Having a lane ward here would be really good too if you can com communicate that because you want to know his positioning and know like what he's doing, and that will help you get kills easier on him. But like that's some stuff you have to communicate with your support. That's some stuff you can directly influence. But it'll it'll help you playing aggressive. I think you need to focus on like zoning this guy out more too. Not zoning, sorry, denying and getting the creep wave in your favor. I know they pulled, but I think you could focus on denying them a little more. 
That's good. I like you didn't overcommit there. You didn't take too much harass to get that off. You might have wanted the ring of health before the boots. I guess the the boots let you harass a little more. The ring of health lets you sustain and get more creeps. Because he does have a little bit of harass, which is kind of annoying. I think like most of the stuff we're gonna see is gonna be in like eight minutes, but um, this is worth checking out. Cool. I like how you don't overcommit on that either, because you could have dove and like maybe you could have gotten the kill, but you would have lost too much and had to blow yourself. So that's really good. The last thing I'm gonna watch was someone playing super over over aggressive when he didn't need to. going okay. Like, I think you you must have missed a few creeps, like I'm watching an accelerated speed. I think you missed, like, a lot of the creeps earlier on, which is what's lowering this. But going forward, I think you should be able to get a lot more. So, that'll hopefully even out. And I don't think you need to necessarily be scared of it. Beastmaster wants to get his ult and then, like, be active. So I don't think you need to necessarily be scared about letting him get a lot of stuff, because he's eventually going to have to leave the game to get the most out of Or, sorry, leave the lane to get the most out of what Obscura does. So I think you need to... Oh, that's rough. I think you're dead here. Did he not have ult? No, no, he didn't. That's rough. Yeah, this guy's not getting you fucking words up. Like, I, at this point, usually you want to tell your support to leave the lane. Like, that'll help you too, because you don't want this guy stealing experience. You just need this lane ward up so that you can do this safely. Because the only way you're going to die is if this guy gets six and they rotate, like, probably the Omni Knight up or the Invoker could kill you. It's like an ult into purification, like a big purification nuke will bring you very low if not kill you. Like in this situation it'll kill you. Killing yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't watch this in advance. I just I could feel it coming. Yeah, that's the only way they kill you. That ward is fucking useless. Oh no, that's their ward, sorry. Yeah, you're still blind here, which is really scary. Um in a situation like this where like if you don't feel safe in this lane, it's like once that Beastmaster has six and has his ult, like right now you know he doesn't have his ult, because he doesn't have mana and you know he just used it. Um you're gonna lose that tower. Yeah, you should deny that tower. You could have. Um, like in that situation, you shouldn't have felt safe because you know he has an ult, and you know any like any rotation should result in a kill. He can ult, he can ult you into like a huge five second arrow, which will give him enough right click to kill you. Ult into purification will kill you. Ult into invoker combo will probably kill you. There's a lot of things that that can kill you right now. So if he doesn't put that lane ward up, you just have to go in the jungle until you feel safe. You just can't show when when you're in that situation. So that death, that, that death hurts. It's not the end of the world, obviously. Like, assuming the rest of your game goes okay, like, for your team, that shouldn't be the end of the world. But clearly this game just balls out of control and results in you getting raxed. Like, it clearly doesn't go well. I'm not looking at the other lanes, I'm really only looking at what you could do. Shadow Demon's hanging out mid, getting experience. Ursa's bottom? Where the fuck is there? Storm's being dumb. Cool. Okay, okay, hold on. We should back up. Here's, I think, where, where we missed, like, lots of opportunity. You see shit going down here for how long? You see a lot of people. You see a lot of people. You see one person. You see two people middle. Okay, from this point. We'll go. This is good, because what you want to be doing here is, like, auto th ordering this down like you're doing, which is good. What the fuck? Why are you getting a headdress recipe? Okay, you need the treads here. That's a problem. I don't know why you have a headdress recipe, but you need the treads. Their harass wasn't significant. Like, the only reason you get the headdress or, like, the ring of um, regen on top of the ring of health is against, like, a dark seer or something, where, like, the harass is so constant and consistent that, like, you just need it. If you had the faster treads, that you would have been able to get there that there sooner. So this is good. Farm is pretty pretty low right now, so you must have like the death probably cost you and like the early CS like for, like, 70, 80 would be okay right now. That lane, 80 is like on the higher end, I guess. If you had absolute free farm, then you can get like close to 100, but like 70 to 80 would have been good. So you're only like 10, 10, 15 behind right now. But you are doing these farming rotations correctly. I still don't think you need the headdress. If you get anything, like you're in an uncontested lane, you get the Bassy. That blink hurt. Um, that blink cost you some farm up here, I think. Um, the Bassy would let you pressure this tower more. 
So here's where you should be scared. You know there's a Marana there, right? We saw the Marana? Yeah, we know there's a Marana, we know there's a Beastmaster, you can't show him then. So you're making the right decision on farming. You could communicate this to your team too and try and have them gank. Once again, it depends if you're playing in a stack or not. A stack will be easier to get done. And if they, you can say it, and if they don't do it, then you do what you're doing. You just farm woods. But your team needs to go as a group. The storm just going here by himself. Like, you knew that was going to happen. So you could have said, like, hey, there's two top. We have no vision. Like, don't go top. Like, still, you're making, like, right decisions, except for that one death, which you should have seen coming. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack! You can't even go top, go middle or bottom. Or actually... Mm. Still don't know where they're... Okay, they're grouping middle, so you know you can do this now. You gotta be on Adri treads for this. Your regen's more effective into a lower HP pool, and you'll push harder because it's giving you no more damage and no more attack speed. Seems like a little thing, once again. Every little. Like when you're an anti mage in particular, this hero is all about being efficient, and what you're doing was inefficient for that moment. You switched to Adri, so that's good. Um, did we want to TP to this? Did you look first? Let's see. Like, you want a TP on the over... The thing is, they don't really have a great mana void target apart from the Invoker. The Invoker doesn't really run through his mana pool like a lot of heroes do. The Invoker's not really there. Um... Let's look at what you got going on. Surround him for a minute there. This fight's breaking out. Okay. You look, you start TP. It's okay, TP. The thing is, like, you're comparing this versus you being able to push top. Like, that's the alternative right now. Like, I might be able to take top tower or this. You can't man up on him like that even when it's down, just because the purification will take away, like, a huge portion of your hit points. If he waited on that purification, I think you died here. I don't, I, see, like, I don't think they needed you for this fight. I, it's kind of 50 50. I don't think you should have showed up for this fight. I don't think you needed to. You need a tread swap here. Your mana is super low. Every time you do your blink, you should really get in the habit of this. Switching to in treads, blinking, switching back to, uh, edge of your string treads. Um, the reason why you want to do that is because it takes a little. Well, I mean, obviously it's more mana efficient, which is why we're saying to do it. But, like, when you're low HP like this, like, you don't want to have to go back to base, so you want to be, like, kind of conservative with your blinks, and every time you do it, you need a tread swap. When tread swapping doesn't matter, it's when you have, like, your manta, and you have, like, tons of stats at that point. Uh, which your, your skill build is good for this, too. So, the, you can stop, um, tread swapping when you're, like, full mana, and you have, um, like, a manta. Because then the regen almost coincide when you have like treads samantha the region like almost starts coinciding with the amount your blinks cost which needs to be like i think it's like 10 it's a five or ten so it needs to be a little over 10 a second but you're not going to blink non-stop so it ends up ends up about equal you could probably angle this a little better um i think you could have been top here too like you could have gotten top pushing clearly it's dangerous now but like once that fight was over, I think you could have went top and farmed that a little more, or a little low, so it starts getting scary again now. After they respawn, these wards are fucking garbage, really bad. It's like unfortunate for you because it limits like you need information to work with when you're an anti mage, and like they're just not giving you information. You see them all here. I don't think you can see him, even though he's showing up on the mini map. There's no reason you should be able to see him. Okay, now you know he's here. That's annoying. Cause like the other problem when you're jungling at like low HP, you're still gonna like lose health from this. And if you're in the lane, then since you're autoing lane creeps, you're actually getting your regen, and the regen almost lets you sustain or lose very little from this. Uh, you could die here. Nice. Take this. Go top. Like you need to be farming top. You can't be in the woods right here. Like you, the woods here is when you don't feel safe in the lane. It's not your first 
The woods is not your first thought. The woods is your, like, shit, I don't have any other choice, I should do this type of thing. Do you finish your battle fury? So you only need the one piece left. Oh, okay. So that's like a little late. Um, you did fight a little bit, you have like, it's okay farm. I think you could have gotten a little more if you, like you waste like three minutes in the woods over here and we're pretty low. But you didn't die for all that, so that's still, it's still pretty alright. Oh, nice meatball dodge. Should be farming the woods here, I think. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Why, thank you, Radiant Team. Um, I think the Vl the Vlad's is still the right option. I mean, like a man, the Vlad's will help you split more and it'll help your team in fights a little bit. Unless, maybe if he has the Vlad's. I think he's working on it. Fucking idiot, he's getting a Shadow Blade. Um, you should keep cutting this creep wave here. Okay, that's good. I think you could I think you should have known you should have been cutting it already though. Like I think when you were over here, this is kinda risky, but keep on, they have no incentive to be in this area. So you should have been cutting it even the creep wave before this. So you missed this cut already. Yeah, and you get like the next cut. Cause their only objective here is like that tower. And then they're gonna start trying to high ground you. So I think you should have started cutting sooner. You could have cut there too. And like draw them over to you, just waste their fucking time. Like kill two great creep wave he waves here, just blink over here and then like TP top and then start farming there again. Cause they're gonna try and respond to you. And even if they didn't, like you just have to play it safe cause you don't have vision. Like you need to tell your team like, please smoke and get deep wards so I can actually play how I have to play to win this game. And sometimes they'll listen, sometimes they won't, but like that's all you can do. So you missed a cut which probably cost you the tier two. Which is unfortunate. You guys don't have excellent wave clear, so maybe you would have lost it anyway. It's tough, like you're you're really not getting space here. I'm surprised you lose this game within the next three minutes. It doesn't seem like it's definitely bad. Well, I guess it's you're the only person with farm on your team. Holy shit, they all have like fifty creeps. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Like here you just have to play risky. If they group up, you're in such shit. You blink over here and you chop the creep wave, go to this camp, chop the creep wave. Farm the Ancients doesn't help your team here. Uh, there might have been a mana void there too that you missed out on. So we're farming this, we have a TP scroll. Does Invoker go hard? Throws a meatball. Yeah, like, here's the thing I'm talking about, like, he's a hero, has an enormous mana pool, but doesn't necessarily need to use it all. Like, oh, 200 mana. It's not a Storm who's zipping across the map. It's an Invoker. He's gonna drop a couple of spells, and they're relatively cheap in comparison to his mana pool, particularly with his new fucking int gain. So, like, the, the huge mana void's not here. So all you have to do is try and avoid that fight. I think cutting it might have been the right decision. Like, your team still could have fucked up, and maybe they would have had the, the creep wave they were with, they would have been able to do it, but... Like I said, there's only so much you can do. Um, not every game is going to be winnable, but maybe like you'll have a similar game to this, but you'll be able to pull it around, or pull it out. Like at this point, it's, I don't know, I guess, there's no point in TPing back yet. You wait till your team's up, and you go for your, you do your best here. But against their team, because they have a PA that you're behind against, you're kind of fucked. Cause you, you need to play ahead against the PA by like out farming and being ahead. Yeah, that's your third death. No, that's the second. And yeah, like at this point, it's kind of like a formality. Like this game is kind of over because they took the two. But uh, so I think you could have played the lane a little better and could have gotten a little more farm. Uh, not a huge amount. You missed like some CS, but like shit happens. Um, Maybe could harass them more. That first death was pretty bad, because you 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 know you should look at a game and you should know what your threats are. Like okay, Beastmaster not really a threat. He's a nuisance until he gets six, and then there's a rotation. If I have a ward here, then I don't have to be scared of rotations. If I have good wards, I don't have to be scared of rotations. I can play like the rotations aren't there. Now that will result in you getting caught by a smoke sometimes. But if you notice him playing differently, then you can kind of like you have to gauge that and just start playing. And like, okay, well, he started playing differently. Why is he playing differently? 
maybe there's a smoke that I can't. That's assuming you have a ward here. But like, nothing really changed. They just TP'd an Omni. Yeah, you didn't see the Omni. You got ulted and you got purification. That's it. Like they, any one of their TPs could result in you dying with the Beastmaster. So you just had to retreat into the woods. Pick AM in a 3k game. Uh, it didn't matter as a 3k game, matter that your your whole team is fucking bad and got like unbelievably far far behind. Like that's not on you entirely. Like there's little things you could have done there that might have changed the course of the outcome. Like the only real mistake you made was that death, which was pretty bad. Um your farm is like okay given the situation and like not doing cuts that were necessary to make this game winnable. But like this game was just like so unbelievably out of control. Like there's always stuff you can do better though. And would it have made the difference? Maybe, maybe not. But um I hope that helps out. I'd I'd like I said, I don't think there's a whole lot you could have done. Uh the little things might have made the difference. You might have been able to draw the game out, but if your team just keeps feeding and keeps dying and can't get farmed, then it's like a one versus five. And against uh against someone like a PA playing from behind is really hard as anti age, because you need to be ahead. You need to have like the MKB and like a Bastard to be able to kill her. And since she was ahead of you, it makes it really awkward to play. Like all you have to do is avoid fighting them. And avoiding fighting them is so hard because your team refused to get your wards up. So I uh I hope that helps. I hope that gives you a little sauce in this, but you know, you can't win every game. But if you play well enough, you can probably win like 70-80% of games. Um, maybe even more. So congrats, you played well. Your team shit the bed. Those are a couple of things you could have done better. If you leave some feedback, um, always appreciated, and I uh, hope it helped. All right, have a good one, man.